Live from our studio in Springfield, you're watching News Channel 20 at 6. Saying their final goodbyes, the emotional moments as fallen officer Chris Oberheim is laid to rest. Everyone knows what um, the sacrifice that officer Oberheim made. As his family continues to mourn how the community is coming together to honor his legacy and memory. Good evening, thanks for joining us. It was a somber day in central Illinois as thousands came out to help one family say their final goodbyes to a fallen officer. Officer Chris Oberheim was officially laid to rest today. We're bringing you team coverage tonight from Decatur to Champaign, starting with News Channel 20's Jordan Elder, who's live in Decatur with more on his funeral. Jordan. John, the funeral service lasted about 90 minutes. Among those invited were family, friends, guests, and law enforcement. And law enforcement showed up. Hundreds of officers spilling out of the church after it was over, ready to pay their final respects to Officer Oberheim. Take a look. Law enforcement officers from across the country coming to pay their respects on Wednesday. After the funeral service, they all lined up outside the church saluting Officer Oberheim as he began his final ride. His police cruiser sat just steps away. Family, friends, girls he coached, co-workers, and those he didn't even know gathering to celebrate his life. And now while the cars are gone and there are people cleaning up the American flags that were lining the perimeter of the church, one thing is very clear. Officer Oberheim's memory will not be forgotten. Live in Decatur, I'm Jordan Elder, News Channel 20. Thank you, Jordan. Now, officers stood outside the funeral home for about 30 minutes before Officer Oberheim's body was brought outside. The funeral director telling the crowd his family wanted just a few more moments with him before his final journey. And after that funeral, the public had the chance to show their support for Officer Oberheim and his family. Hundreds lining that route, going all the way from Decatur to Oberheim's final resting place in Monticello. And we're continuing our coverage of the fallen officer's funeral tonight. News Channel 20's Taylor Deckard is standing by in Champaign uh, police, with the police department there where Oberheim worked. But first, News Channel 20's jo Jacob Emerson live in Monticello with how fellow first responders pay tribute to his memory. Jacob. Yeah, John, it has certainly been a very sad day here in the very in the tight knit community of Monticello where Officer Oberheim lived, but it was especially difficult for those local first responders and uh, law enforcement who all tell me today is a day of hurt for them all. That hurt was evident in Decatur this morning for the funeral ceremony. Law enforcement agencies from around the country could be seen at the church, even traveling from as far as Texas and New York to honor the fallen officer. The funeral procession leaving Decatur later in the afternoon for Monticello. We support the police and we work with the police and they work with us. And so this was uh, the absolute least that we could do to help honor um, Officer Overheim after his sacrifice. That was the Champaign Fire Department discussing their hanging of a large American flag from two fire trucks along the procession route. And Champaign police officers also telling me today that this was the first Champaign police officer to die in the line of duty since 1967. It was also especially difficult, um, but we did see law enforcement from Chicago to Carbondale make their way to Monticello this afternoon, all to pay tribute for their fellow fallen officer. Reporting live in Monticello, I'm Jacob Emerson, John Stacey. Thanks, Jacob. Officer Chris Oberheim was laid to rest at the Monticello Township Cemetery shortly after that procession. He was surrounded by the Champaign Police Department along with his wife and his four daughters. The Champaign Police Department has been paying tribute to Officer Oberheim since his death last week, with a squad car being covered in flowers by the community. The vehicle was outside the Champaign Police Department before being moved to Decatur for today's funeral. Now that squad car, just one of the many ways the community has shown an outpouring of support for Officer Oberheim and his family, with thousands taking the time to honor his memory. Our team coverage continues tonight with News Channel 20's Taylor Deckard, who's live at the Champaign Police Department with more. Taylor. Officer Oberheim was loved by so many people from all over central Illinois came out to the procession to show support. Now, while the cars were driving through Monticello, the community was silent. Today was the final goodbye to Officer Oberheim. 
Many people at the processional had ties to the law enforcement community, whether it be retired officers, family in the line of duty, or children wearing a badge. It hit home for a lot of people, the hurt that this community is going through. It's heartbreaking. Uh, being a spouse, I can't imagine what their family's going through. Many people crafted shirts and wore blue and black in honor of Officer Oberheim. Since the shooting, the community has been rallying around the Champaign and Decatur Police Departments, stepping up to help in any way that they can. And some of those actions include helping at the Oberheim's household, helping with a food drive, and just having some undeniable support during this time. Officer Oberheim will not be forgotten. Reporting in Champaign, Taylor Decker, back to you. All right, thanks for that report, Taylor. Milliken University also doing its part to help people in Decatur to show their support during the procession. The university offering parking for the community to watch the procession as it passed by campus on Fairview Avenue. Monticello's school district also dismissed classes early to give people uh, time to prep for the procession. Officer Chris Oberheim was shot and killed while responding to a domestic disturbance call on May 19th. Oberheim and another officer were responding to a dispute when they were both shot. This happened at the Town Center Apartments in Champaign. The suspect is 24-year-old Darian Lafayette. He died at the scene as well. The investigation is still ongoing. Now, the other officer injured in the shootout, Jeffrey Creel, he was shot three times during the May 19th incident. He was taken to Carl Hospital for treatment and he has since been released. He is still recovering from those injuries. Turning to your weather, we're getting closer to the threat of some severe weather coming right here to central Illinois. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke for what we're looking at. Cheryl? Hey John, well you never know it based on today's weather, but come tomorrow we could be dealing with some severe thunderstorms. So if you have some errands to run, today is the day to get those things accomplished because we've got some really nasty weather potentially coming in for tomorrow. Right now though, still enjoying fair skies, quiet weather, some sunshine right now for Springfield, 86 degrees. Looking ahead though for tomorrow, the Storm Prediction Center has placed all of us either under a marginal to slight risk, even in some cases even an enhanced risk for severe weather. The bottom line, all of us will be fair game to see some powerful, very intense weather for tomorrow, and we could be dealing with some large hail, damaging wind gusts, maybe an isolated tornado or two and some locally heavy rains and some heavy downpours. All of this ba basically coming in after four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So definitely keep the rain gear handy for tomorrow. We'll talk more about the timing for these thunderstorms and what to expect in your neighborhood coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks Cheryl. Coming up, pushing to get people vaccinated. How officials are working to make sure that everyone gets the COVID-19 vaccine. Plus demanding answers in a special report. We continue to press IDES for answers on how much money was paid out to fraudsters. And tracking that threat for severe weather. Here's a live look outside when we could see storms covering those skies. Stay with us. Welcome back. Vaccines are readily available and those that want it already got it. But now what's the next push to get the vaccine out to those who don't yet have it? News Channel 20's Alyssa Hui is working for you to explain what lengths health officials are willing to go to increase the vaccinated population. Alyssa. Medicine are willing to go as far as bringing the vaccines directly into people's communities and even homes. Vaccines have been available for over six months, but Springfield residents like Amy Mayberry say now the new challenge is reaching those who currently don't want to get it or don't have access. We can't get out of this community block until we get everybody on the same page and everybody moving forward. That's why Gail O'Neill, director of the Sangamon County Health Department, says they're willing to bring the vaccine where the people are. Pretty much any place that there's a few people that would like vaccinated, we certainly um, will do that. But it doesn't come without preparation and planning. We can't just, you know, say, oh, I've got 10 people here now and they want it. And we can call and do it right away. That's that's not possible because of the preparation of the vaccine. O'Neill says if more people get the vaccine, the virus won't take hold as strongly in the community as it did before. You know, the vaccine 
um, getting it even if you're not too sure you're getting it for someone else. You're getting it for our community as a whole. Even though there are several vaccine options on the table, including mobile clinics and communities and homes, residents like Mayberry say it all comes down to personal choice. So if people make the decision to go to a community event that they're making that choice, whereas in if they knock on the door and say, hey, we've got the vaccine, it's a little bit intrusive. Now, the health department says if you know of a community event or leader interested in holding a vaccine clinic, that you reach out to them directly. Reporting live in Springfield, Melissa Hui, News Channel 20. Thank you, Alyssa. Now, as of today, 43% of the population in Sangamon County is fully vaccinated. Illinois healthcare professionals, they've now given out more than 11 million vaccine doses across the state. 174,000 of those were given here in Sangamon County. Right now, more than 84,000 people in the county are fully vaccinated. That's more than 43% of the population. And public health officials announcing 27 new deaths from COVID-19. The total is now more than 22,600. Officials also announcing more than 1,100 new cases of the virus in the state. Still to come, fighting unemployment fraud after thousands of fraudulent claims in the past year, IDES still not answering a key question, how much money they've paid out to fraudsters. And here's a live look from the HSHS St. John's Hospital Tower Cam. Hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather today because the big changes are heading our way. Cheryl's got those details after the break. But first, as we head to break, let's take a look at today's closing market numbers. Project Illinois, for months we've asked question after question to the Illinois Department of Employment Security, and normally we do get answers, but there is one question that has gone unanswered for months. How much of your tax money has been paid to fraudsters? News Channel 20's Matt Roy joins us now with that special report. That's exactly right. I've asked questions about claims, the callback center, even the IDS budget trust fund, and normally you get responses. But over the last five months, I've repeatedly asked the IDES director and the public information officer just how much money has been paid out to fraudulent claims. To this one question, there's only been one answer over and over. How much money has been uh, wrongfully paid out to, to fraudulent claims this year? We are working to quantify that. Do you know the amount of the benefits paid under those claims that you've now stopped? We are working to quantify that number. A budget presentation on March 10th said they're working diligently to quantify benefits paid to imposters as a result of identity theft. April 30th, IDS continues to work to quantify the dollar amount attributable to fraud and the programs from which dollars have been paid out. And even in a Freedom of Information Act request that I got back on May 18th, they said no responsive information. So I asked the governor. How long is it acceptable to not know how much taxpayer money has been paid out to criminals? Well, remember the complexity of it is that we have federal authorities working with us to identify the fraudulent activity. So it's not all like as obvious as you would think that it is. So we're working together with them. There's, you know, an effort there to get that data, to put that data out. But it's been, it's been over six months that that question hasn't been answered. I'm sorry, what? It's been six months since the, we've originally asked that question that's still unable to be answered, even though they can track down to the dollars. I but as you know, there are people who are applying even now for unemployment and people who are uh, reapplying to make sure that they can continue to get their unemployment. Um, obviously, all that data, as well as people who've rolled off unemployment, all that's being looked through and we'll get the data as soon as we do. But despite not being able to compile that data, they are able to track down to the dollar the amount of claim money that's been paid out and the number of fraudulent claims. They just don't know how much of this was paid to that. Republican Senator Jason Barrickman asked about this in February, and even he, a state legislator, still hasn't gotten an answer. I, I don't know whether they just don't know the answer or whether they just don't want to be transparent about it. Now, one last time, I reached out to IDES on May 20th and asked again. They said IDES is quantifying the dollar amount attributable to fraud. The department is still committed to getting the number as accurate as possible. I followed. Is there a timeline for this? They responded, no, we're working to arrive at these numbers as are other states. Think about it this way. There have been approximately 1,720,825 fraudulent claims. If each one of those got a one-time payment of $1, that's $1.72 million. 
if each got $10, that's 17.2 million. 100, 172 million. And 1,000, that would be over $1 billion paid out fraudulently. And while IDES says some claims were stopped without money being paid out, there have also been cases like Nancy Melendez, who lives in California and has never even set foot in Illinois. And she received a single unemployment payment of more than $11,000. In Springfield, I'm Matt Rowe reporting. Thank you, Matt. Now, we did reach out to IDES once more on Monday to find out this answer. We are yet to get a response. Now, your storm team weather with Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke. Today's weather has been quiet, but come tomorrow, a totally different story as I am tracking the possibility for severe weather. Now, the Storm Prediction Center has placed most of us under a marginal to slight risk for severe weather, and some communities closer towards St. Louis actually under an enhanced risk. The bottom line, all of us could be fair game to see some powerful, very intense weather tomorrow. We could be seeing thunderstorms packing large hail, damaging wind gusts, maybe isolated tornadoes, and perhaps some locally heavy rain and some flooding as well. Right now, though, all is quiet, as we were mentioning, not a raindrop to be found, but big changes coming our way. The cold front that actually triggered some of those scattered showers and isolated storms yesterday has now slipped into southern Illinois, but the trailing end of this front is turning into a warm front, and that warm front will start to arc its way back over towards central Illinois, helping to trigger the rough weather for tomorrow. Now, I think we'll be okay, though, later on for tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy skies, but later for the afternoon into the evening hours tomorrow, you'll be dodging some heavier showers and some thunderstorms. So tracking this out with our future cast, still very quiet, very uneventful tonight. Look for increasing clouds up by tomorrow morning. Still dry though around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. But by the early afternoon hours, we start to see some scattered showers and thunderstorms bubbling up. But I really think the brunt of the showers and storms waiting until mid to late afternoon into the evening hours. As we stop the clock between 8 and 9 o'clock tomorrow evening, widespread showers and thunderstorms rumbling across central Illinois. More intense weather too rumbling in around midnight tomorrow night. Then luckily by Friday, things will start to calm down a little bit. The rain showers will taper off and we'll see some drier skies returning by Friday afternoon. But not before we do pick up some drenching rains, perhaps a half an inch to an inch or more rainfall by the time it's all said and done. So our seven day forecast shows some rough weather coming in for tomorrow. Drier skies by Friday afternoon and the good news for the upcoming holiday weekend really picture perfect. Lots of sunshine, not as warm, not as muggy, comfortable temperatures, lower 70s for Saturday and Sunday, mid 70s for Monday with partly cloudy skies. And Marcella Bayoto is joining us now with a look at what's coming up tonight over on our sister station, Fox Illinois News at 9. Marcella. Hi, John. Deportations at the southern border are at a record low. Tonight on Fox Illinois News at 9, some are on edge as they wait for President Biden's budget to be released. Why they say the situation could go from bad to worse. Thanks, Marcella. Still to come, preparing for the holiday weekend. How law enforcement's gearing up for a special enforcement. Sangamon County Crime Stoppers looking for information on an attack involving a paintball gun. It happened on May 11th at Keg Tavern on 11th Street. Police saying that a suspect came into that business and shot the paintball gun, hitting multiple people and items inside. The suspect then took off in a black Dodge Avenger. Anyone with information, you're asked to contact Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. And remember, you can remain anonymous. Law enforcement is gearing up for a special Memorial Day enforcement. The Department of Transportation and State Police are partnering with police across the state for the national border to border campaign. The goal is to increase seatbelt patrols over the holiday weekend. Officials say seatbelts are the best line of defense in a crash. Well, looking ahead now, the Red Cross teaming up with the White Oaks Mall for a blood drive. That drive will be Saturday, June 5th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Green Hyundai at the mall. All blood types are needed, but the greatest need is for O negative, B negative, and A negative. You can also check with the local blood center, Impact Life, for more options on donating. District 23 Boutique taking time to get back to veterans this week. Tomorrow, the store will be giving out free lunch and other gifts to any military veteran as a way to uh, honor Memorial Day. Veterans can stop by the store on South Grand between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And we'll be right back with a final check of the forecast.
spoiled by some nice weather today and fortunately does not last. On Thursday, there's a chance to see some severe weather, so really heads up, stay weather alert for Thursday. Nasty thunderstorms possible by the afternoon hours, but the good news, the upcoming holiday weekend looks great. Lots of sunshine and much drier weather. Happening tonight on ABC Primetime, it's Press Your Luck and the $100,000 Pyramid followed by a million little things. I love all these game shows coming back. Yeah, it's Me too. They're always my that. favorite. They are. Well, and they're all starting to welcome back audiences too, yeah. which is a big deal. Like, hey, look at us. I We're know. all it's vaccinated <laughs> so we can be together. Yep. It's pretty exciting. Yep, it yeah. is. Yeah. All right, we'll see you tonight at 10.